Emmaus, we're here at Glenstall Abbey. Um, I first noticed you last night when you ran down to help me take a photograph with my mother. And then I went to the mass this morning with my mum and uh, spotted you there in, in your full outfit, I suppose, uh, the robes. Uh, so I didn't realise you were a monk. You are a monk, is that right? Uh, junior monk. Yeah. Junior monk. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about who you are and um, how you've ended up here. Uh, I, I was a monk in the States. I lived in the States um, and after about 10 years or so I joined a monastery over there um, and that was a hermitage so I wanted to see more of Cenobitic life so I went to a Cenobium uh, that uh, belonged to the same congregation as this monastery in the States um, but I thought I would do better if I could see something with my own culture back in Ireland so I came back here um, and that was in 2009 and then I did a visit here, I was simply professed uh, two years ago here, so now I'm here. Why did you want to lead a religious life? Uh, because I wanted to see how I could change the way I was living at the time, that I felt something uh, deeper had to change in me, not just a question of what I was doing or how I was living, but something that was that informed all of that, something underneath that, that had to be reached at that level, rather than anything that might be, that might turn out to be a superficial level. I wanted it to be an experience of a deeper sense of conversion and change of direction, change of approach to dealing with life, emotions, that kind of stuff. Um, some people uh, might suggest that that's kind of extreme or, or could mm. be said trying to run away from whatever the issue yeah, is sure yeah. um, rather than embracing it in your day-to-day -day life and getting yeah, on with yeah yeah and maybe they're right maybe I did I don't know I mean I did what I thought would be the most honest um, response to this to the to understanding what the challenge was and I thought because my tradition was Catholic um, and because I felt there was a strong resonance with my sense of desire for reform and what I could see was the, the, the structure or what's offered in a monastic life that I thought I would at least explore that and it was really just more of a question of entering into an exploration of that and seeing where that uh, led me or, or how that developed and so far it's developed to here um, and it's the challenges that it's brought up have been very very different than something that you'd run away from I mean my might Mm, there's more case of where you discover something about yourself within a monastery um, and try to avoid that than my experiences of how I have discovered stuff about myself in relationship, in work, in, in, in life uh, before the monastery. What you was know, your life so like before the monastery? Um, it was great. Um, I, was, I did uh, graphic design, illustration work um, and I moved over to the States uh, and I did that kind of work over there. Um, so it was great. I was living in Los Angeles, um, which is a great place to live. So it was, it was demanding. But mm. what was interesting was that it, it, because the nature of the business is that it's, it's directed toward commercialism, a, a commercial way of selling something as opposed to understanding something or explaining something or having somebody share something deeper about their lives other than advertising product that says this will enhance your life when in fact it doesn't really actually enhance something as deep as as an experience of the divine or an experience of something that will actually help you understand mm. yourself better yeah do you miss um like within the confines of a monastery or your own particular fate are there issues around sexuality that obviously there's been a lot of discussion of sex and celibacy mm. how do you mm. reconcile all of that um i don't know about reconciling it i think yeah it, it's one of those things that you have to face as an adult anywhere you are in life. Um, the question is, is, is whether an individual can explore his or her sexuality through chastity. Like the thing about chastity and celibacy is that that can be a place of fulfillment for a person's sexuality as well, uh, as just as much as a relationship with somebody else or even the single life, you know, whatever it might be. I think sexuality is something that, that is a gift from God that can be explored um, in many ways that can either be uh, corruptible and corrupting or enhancing and life-giving and so you can understand yourself better through that experience of sexuality and, and an experience of God through that, through, through your sexuality. I think sexuality is something that has to be lived 
uh, fully and honestly um, because I think it's it's one of the gifts of God and if you don't live that or enter into that in the same way that you must enter into anything in relationship with God or yourself uh, it will it will uh, lessen the quality of your life why so do you think chastity or celibacy is necessary or why you mean in a monastic sense yeah uh, well, it's just, uh, historically, the priesthood is there for it. It's certainly practical uh, because of um, the nature of community living. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's really also a reflection of a sincere attempt to try to uh, present a witness to a celibate way of life as not a, uh, a life of somebody who is deprived of something, but somebody who can celebrate their sexuality and mm. live it fully um, in, a, in a different uh, dimension mm. than, than others, you know. I mean, variety is the spice of life. And I think, you know, as people, we're not all made the same. We're made very different. And there's different levels of that and there's different ways of being faithful to that. Uh, what do you think about the, the various revelations of abuses? And, you know, a lot of people have mm. moved away from religion Catholicism sure, yeah. um, because they've lost faith in structure and hierarchies yeah yeah how, how do you feel about yeah. all of that oh I, I totally um, I, I totally see how that that uh, that certainly has had a terrible impact on me too um, I think I think if anything I hope that 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 sense of criticism to the church will actually um, help them see how they must change how they um, have to take responsibility both for what went wrong and for how they they kind of condone that for so long. Like that has to be challenged. That has to change. And I hope that the the church, the hierarchy, those people who are responsible for these things can actually take see this as a message, as a as something that they have to really address, um, because it needs to be addressed. It needs to be redressed. Um, but I certainly um, have great. Uh, sympathy and under uh, uh, at least try to appreciate um, the amount of pain that that that's there mm -hmm. in this this issue and don't uh, in any way um, would criticize people who have left the mm -hmm. church. I would encourage the church to see that as a challenge to how they must direct their attention to this, both the concern and the people involved. You know, the church is the people. Mm. What about the role of women? Um, even just at mm. the mass this morning, I, I yeah. observed it is women are very much in the back seat but yeah, yet yeah. are one of the forces that keep the church alive yeah absolutely yeah 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 well when when you see the the mass here you see you see a, a monastic mass as well i mean although it's, it's 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 the same liturgy in any catholic church um it's it's a it's a mass of a monastic community that people participate in um so because of that um i suppose uh when it comes to readers and service it's it's members of the community that are asked um, to, to play that, that part in the liturgy. Um, but yeah, I, I wish, uh, wish to God that, that, that the church would um, actually see that it's time to actually change how women have been marginalised in the church and certainly in their participation in liturgy and, 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 and the sacraments of the church to see how that can actually mm. change and develop, you know. What her. does God mean to you? Love. God means love. It's as simple as it is and as absolute as that I suppose and where do you see the hope for the future say particularly for <coughs> Ireland at a time mm. when a lot of people are struggling and there's been a lot of abuse and injustice mm. from so many structures where do you think the hope will come from um, I think by challenging um, not just politically but personally but like uh, I think that there's a real need for someone to help direct the the ethics um, that have been lacking in all areas of of Irish society for so long. I think in this regard, and um, I think it will come from people being able to articulate it better than I am. Uh, but people who will be able to to face this honestly and um, actually believe that this is not how we are meant to manifest our lives, that God intends for us to live in a loving, sharing relationship with each other, um, and that the, the solution to this is through, um, uh, uh, I think, through uh, an honest kind of integration of uh, faith or religion in our, in our personal and public practices. 
do you think it's possible for people when you mention faith and religion mm. for people without a religion or a faith to live a equally fulfilling life absolutely yeah 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 sure there's there's so much evidence of that already i mean there's people who 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 define themselves as atheists and they write brilliant stuff stuff that really influences the rest of us and helps us gives us a sense of hope too yeah um so yeah yeah i mean i only speak from my own experiences of of how religion has played a part in my life and how that struggle and trying to understand and deal with the perplexity of what <coughs> what you hear on one level at liturgy and what you experience in life how that can be reconciled how they can actually work together like it's a struggle for all of us whatever your your faith belief might be <coughs> Um, so, just one final question, Amis. Um, if you were talking to your 15-year-old self yeah. and going back in time, <laughs> and this video maybe was for them, yes. what advice do you think you might give them? I don't know. <laughs> um, I would say uh, the things that I was anxious about at 15 wouldn't certainly weren't worthy of that anxiety. Um, but the optimism that I was told was too idealistic at 15 was something that I would certainly encourage any 15 year old to invest in like be hopeful be optimistic be believe in love believe in 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 the ability for people to change for the better and for you to to participate in that be part of that any final message <laughs> that's it <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much no, no,